because I want to put some of this on the podcast. <laughs> so, hi Rima. Hi. Say hi to the internet. Hi internet. We're going to Frederick Fiberfest. I feel like a nerd because it's <laughs> ew, vlog camera disgusting. Forget it. But I'll show you like cool stuff maybe if we see cool stuff. Okay. Uh. Before I send this off as part of the um, sock along prizes, I just want to say I got this um, needle holder from the Frederick Fiberfest as one of the, well I got one for myself that I'll show you, but I also got one for giveaway for the sock along. So this is from Twisted Yarn and Fiber Bags and Notions, and it's um, just a needle holder. You can use it for dpns or for circular needles so yeah um for circular needles i can show you because i got one for myself and i put my um socks that i'm still working on um i put the needles in here so you can um you see there's like the two button side and the one button side so what you would do is stick your needles in this way um on the two button side to make sure it's like extra secure and then if you have leftover cord from or like your cable from your needle oh you'd stick the leftover cord end through here um that sounds kind of confusing but i will either insert a picture or just like show you what i mean on how you use this thing if you've never used one before but i just thought it was really cute and um we're get coming into i mean it's fall but like it's getting colder and stuff, so this is going more into the next season, kind of festive. And I just thought this pattern was super cute. So I got that, and then I also got this other thing. One second. So this giant thing that looks like a mossy rock or something, it's a dryer ball. Um, and so instead of putting in those like dryer sheet thingies that you get from the store uh, in with your clothes in the dryer, this one um, is... I don't remember if it's wool or, alp or alpaca. I will have to look at... I took some footage and a picture of the sign at the place where I bought it at the Fiberfest um, from the vendor. So I will insert that information here. But you put it in um, to reduce the static from your clothes like in the dryer and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. Less waste than just using those disposable dryer sheets all the time. So I just... I wanted to get a couple extra things to send with the sock along um sock set prize so those are some things that i put in the package hello so i'm kind of recuperating from a busy weekend and bonfire and a bunch of other stuff so i just wanted to show you my acquisitions from the frederick fiber fest well most of them and uh you're not gonna see my face because i am really tired and in my pjs and i don't want to be on camera so I'm just going to show you what I've recently added to my yarn corner. And first we have these two skeins. Um, these are from, let's see. Well, they're both 100% merino wool, 200 yards. Uh, from 
Moon on the Mountain Farm. They're from West Virginia. And uh, yeah, I just got these two beautiful skeins because they were in kind of the like, I don't know, bargain bin, I guess you would call it. And it was my first purchase of the day at the Fiber Fest. I couldn't really resist these soft colors. Uh, I could have got two of the exact same skein, like two matching ones, but I thought this would be nice to do something uh, with these slightly different ones, but they still go together, you know what I mean? Um, so I got these two skeins. Next, I started buying fiber because of course I could not resist um, getting a bunch of different, uh, well, looking at a bunch of different types of fiber and not really being able to decide what to get. But look at this beautiful colorway that's like, um, it's got like this like tealish color. It's, it looks more teal in person than on camera. Purple, pink, um, black, green. Um, it's a really beautiful, oh, you can see a lot more in here, really beautiful mix of colors from uh, Painted Spring Farm Alpacas. So here's their information. Got six ounces from them, and it's really beautiful and really soft. And um, the 5% Angelina you see there, that's the like sparkly bits that I'm sure you can see at the top. Um, if I move it, you can kind of see the light shine on them. So I got this to try, um, which uh, if you can, you can see in the background, uh, I've got my uh, gray from, my gray Corydale from Paradise Fibers that I still haven't spun yet. I did start drafting some of it, like pre-drafting, but I haven't gotten to using it on the wheel yet. So I think I'm going to work on that over there first before even breaking into this. But it was just beautiful and I really wanted to... I don't know. I wanted to buy fiber while I was there, so I bought this first. And then I the next thing I got ugh, was this, which from Colorway Fiber Arts. And let's see if the information's on the tag. And okay, here it is. Uh Colorway Fiber Arts. And it's merino, 4.2 ounces. And I, I really liked this. Um this is a super like green and brown kind of natural natural colorway uh i really i was torn between this and a uh, different kind of green and blue one but i figured i would wear something that's green and brown more than the like oceany blues that i saw so i got this these are the only fiber things i got while i was there because i was trying not to buy too many things. <laughs> I am going to the, what is it called? Maryland Alpaca Breeder Association, whatever their festival thing they put on. Um, that's at a different local fa fairgrounds next weekend. So I'm going to go to that and I don't want to, I don't know, I didn't want to buy too much this weekend and not have enough of my budget for next time. Um, if you're wondering what this is dangling here, these are old swatches. Um, well, this is actually the swatch for the sweater that I am wearing right now, if you can see my sleeve, but <laughs> that's funny. And this was um, a tiny swatch for a shawl that I made my mom. And I just, yeah, I just have my swatches dangling from there. Um, and okay, let me go get, I got one more thing, I think. Hold on. Oh, I did want to say I got this yarn. Um, I'm making a hat for my best friend who she, you will see her in the clips from the festival because she went with me, but we got this yarn from Passion Knits Yarn. Um, they were super nice and gave us a free pin, like a button thingy. Hold on. I'll show you it. Eh. This. They gave both of us one of these for free before we had even decided to buy anything. They just like gave us a pin, which was really sweet. And their yarn's beautiful. This yarn, um... It's a worsted weight, and I looked online for the base name, and this base isn't on Ravelry, but it says that the yarn base is called Wonderfully, and it's 100% extra fine superwash merino. It's worsted, and the color is called, sorry, um, Love Overboard After Dark, and it's 218 yards. But it's so beautiful, and my niece helped me cake this up last night because... Uh, two of my nieces were over, and we spent a while kicking up, like, six or seven skeins of different yarns. So that was a fun uh, Saturday night activity for us before we went and had a bonfire. So 
Um, this wasn't the thing that I was going to get to show you. Actually, I got um, a needle case, so I'll be right back while I go find that. This is the needle case that I got for myself uh, because giraffes are my favorite animal. And Rima saw this and said like, oh, immediately that, hey, you need to get this one. I picked up a needle case as a prize for the spooky season sock along. And um, I wanted to get one for myself because they were pretty, pretty affordable. They were like maybe $5 or something. And I asked Rima, okay, the one, I, the first one I saw I got for giving away and I asked her hey what pattern should I get for myself and she found this and I was like ah it's beautiful I love it um the other side has other animals that I don't care about as much but like the giraffe side is important to me <laughs> but I took a quick little video of the needle case I got for uh Val for winning the sock along because I probably have mailed it by now and I just wanted to have a little clip so you could see what the pattern was but there I tried explaining how you use it for circular needles and I didn't I don't think I was clear so as you can see um my needles are fully in here like my socks aren't gonna fall off at all and what I did was on this side where oh gosh hold on this is really hard to do with one hand so on um, the left side that has two buttons um this is the side that like my actual needles are on and I just slid them like I'm at the end of a row so I slid the needles in and pushed them like on the other side like into the case so that the button will prevent this is so hard oh sorry it's really hard to do this with one hand I should like I don't know get someone else to film for me when I do stuff like this but um secure it so that the needles are like on this side of the button, you know, um, on this side. And then like my extra cord, cause my cord is super, super long. The extra cord is the only thing on this side of this button. So I just slid in the extra over here and buttoned it. So it's secure on both ends. And I can put this project in my bag without worrying about like something falling off. So like, I don't know, it's not going anywhere. It's really nice. Good way to store my uh, two at a time socks. And uh, in the clip of the other needle case, I've showed you the dryer ball that I got. And those are all of the things that I got yesterday at the Fiber Festival. But actually, there's one thing I got before we stepped into the festival because there was a farmer's market happening across the street and there was a stand that had only gluten-free baked goods. And I am gluten-free for medical reasons, so I was super excited because I like baked goods, but I can never have them. So I got a bunch of sweets. So I got two different kinds of cookies. This one has like M&Ms and stuff in it. And this one's just chocolate chip. And then I got a brownie. So I haven't tried them yet, but Rima also got a um, cookie from the same stand. What were they called? Um, I'll find their card. Hold on. So if you are in the like Maryland, Virginia area, I got the sweets from... Well, it was a woman and her daughter, so I'm assuming it was Erica and whatever her daughter's name is. And, um, yeah, I don't know. They, oh, there's nothing on the back, but th they were super, super nice and had good suggestions for, like, baking ingredients if I wanted to bake things on my own. Um, and, yeah, Rima tried the cookie that she got from them, and she said it was really good, and she is, I don't think she's ever had any kind of gluten-free food ever, like, that's that's a silly way to put it. Of course, people eat things that are gluten-free, but I mean, like, something that is normally not gluten-free, but you had to use, like, alternate, alternate ingredients to make it. Like, baked goods generally use flour that is, like, wheat flour, but this was her first time eating something that was, like, intentionally not using gluten at all um, for baking and stuff. I hope that makes sense. I am explaining so much for no reason, but my point is... I have a bunch of stuff to eat and I'm happy and I have beautiful yarn and a cool thing and more beautiful yarn over in the corner over there. So yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, look at him. Look at that little face. <laughs> Why are you so cute? I feel like, oh, look at that haircut. <laughs> oh, what are you looking at? Oh, the ears, so cute.
Hello everyone, I'm Gabby. Welcome to the Knit Witch Podcast. This is where I talk about knitting, spinning, sometimes dyeing, sometimes crocheting, but usually just knitting. Um, and now that I've got my new spinning wheel, lots of spinning because I'm spinning more than I used to with my drop spindle. So uh, welcome in if you're new and welcome back if this isn't your first time here uh, on the channel. So to get started today, first I wanted to say, um, well, let's start with these earrings that I'm wearing. I don't know if you can kind of see those well, but I'm wearing my spinning wheel earrings today. And these are from Bauer Family Farm. Um, I have something else from them that I'll be showing you later in the video. So I'll put their information on the screen. I have their card, so I might, if I can find it, I'll, I'll show it. But um, yeah, that, these are from the, like, I always forget what the official name of the festival is, but uh, in 2019, I went to the Maryland, like, Alpaca Breeders Association, their uh, fiber festival that they put on every year, and my mom got these for me as a Christmas gift from there, so, yeah, and I, I wore them this weekend, too, because, okay, what's today? Today is Sunday, the 14th, I think, of November? And yesterday I went to the Maryland Alpaca Breeders Association, like the Alpaca and Fleece Festival. I went there yesterday. It's still going on today, but I only went for one day because I was not about to do <laughs> both days. Um, this year, it was actually, I mean, when, when I went in 2019, that was my first time going ever. And it was huge. There were so many vendors and there were significantly fewer vendors this time. So I don't even need two days. Like I, I saw everything in 2019 when I went, I should have gone both days because I didn't make it to every booth, but it's okay. Hopefully next year there'll be more vendors again. Um, now that they're starting to have the festival again, but, um, wow, I got so off topic. Well, okay. Because I mentioned that. So I went there yesterday on Saturday and last weekend I went to the Frederick Fiber Festival with, or Frederick Fiber Fest, I guess is what it's actually called. So I have acquisitions from both festivals that I'm going to show you after we get through kind of what I've been working on since the last time you saw me. And I think, I think I'm going to start with my um, one FO that I have. If I can find it. Where did I put it? Oh, okay. It's here. So I hope you I don't know I've, I've been trying to make the background a little interesting so I have I kind of reorganized my yarn whoa, whoa my main yarn shelf I kind of reorganized there's still yarn behind me that you can't see because I'm sitting in front of it but like this is just the way the positioning of furniture in my room allows me to film so okay this is the only FO that I have I believe and it's this hat um, it's so beautiful. I love these colors. So this is the Spring Ahead Beanie by Cozy Up Knits. That's what the pattern is. And this beautiful purple yarn. Well, I say purple, but obviously it's multicolored. It's so gorgeous. Um, it's a worsted weight from Passion Knits Yarn. So here's the tag so you can see what their logo looks like. And I will, um, what you call it, I'll put their info in the description so you can check them out. They were super nice. So this was my first acquisition, actually, of the Fiber Fests. I, th this is, it's not the only yarn that I bought, but um, I got this at the Frederick Fiber Fest. And they were super nice at their booth. I, uh... I'm sure I'll insert clips from when I went to the festival with my best friend and um, she actually picked out this yarn because she does not knit or crochet or spin or weave or even sew or embroider or anything like that but she wanted to go to the fiber fest with me which was really really sweet and I had her pick out a skein or just like for color wise, like she, I could have bought her more than one skein, but I just said like, let me know what colors you like, or if you see anything you really love. And she picked out this skein from Passion Knits and I said like, okay, I'm gonna get that and make you something. So 
this is a gift for Christmas for my friend Rima and yeah I don't know I hope she likes it I showed her some different things that I've knit to like make sure that this would be a pattern that she'd like so um she just wanted a simple kind of beanie type thing and she tried on some hats that I've made before so like I know that the size should fit her and her preference for like ribbing length and everything um and I'll, I'll show it close up one more time so you can kind of see the pattern what it's like I don't know it's super nice I love it it's really a quick knit from cozy up it's super simple um I don't remember if it's free or a paid for pattern but uh it's definitely on Ravelry and I believe it's on Lovecrafts because they almost always put their patterns on Lovecrafts too the color of the yarn is called love overboard after dark I don't I don't know what that means but I like it <laughs> and um it was 218 yards so uh worsted weight 100% extra fine superwash merino wool so that's awesome that it's superwash um the yarn base on the tag it says it's called wonderfully but when I went on their website to look up more and just check out their website um when I found this color on their website it just said the base was undecided so I guess they didn't update the name because it's a newer base or something but would recommend it's really soft plush the elasticity is really nice and it's really fluffy and the colors are just so gorgeous I've been so into like purples and pinks lately so I don't know this is like this is my jam this is right up my alley right now I soup I super love this colorway and um it's, it was funny that Rima picked it out because I also really liked it. So I was like, ah, oh, good choice. All right. Um, and like I touched on for a second before, the owners of this company are super nice. And they're really sweet at the booth and gave us like a free little like button pin thing that I put on my bag that I was carrying around that day. So that was really great. Um, next up. Oh, boy. Um... I guess I'll go to what's in this bag. I have a bunch of different project bags open at the moment or like full of stuff at the moment. So I'm trying to remember what's in wh which bag. I just have this rice bag <laughs> um, and that's what my um, the hat for my friend was in. I'm going to put this ball band back because that's where I have the extra yarn. Um, her hat, now that it's finished, and I, did I leave in the ends? Kind of. <laughs> the end around the brim I wove in, but not the, like, final end closing it at the top, but whatever. But because this is, like, mostly finished, I had it sitting out somewhere else instead of in the project bag. So, um, that's that, and I'll just stick this here. Till I'm done and next up we'll talk about oh geez the socks so <laughs> if you remember my spooky season sock along and the fiasco I had with my needle breaking and then having to order new needles my new needles arrived I got some metal needles from nitpicks and um right now I've I mean I haven't really worked on these socks at all they are in these, um, this needle holder thing, just so it doesn't get tangled or not tangled, just so nothing falls off or whatever, because I just haven't been working on these. I'm still just after finishing the gusset, and I've done a little bit of the foot, but I still need several inches of the foot before I can even get to the toes and then be finished. So that's my sock progress. Literally nothing has happened. And I believe I filmed some clips last weekend about these socks specifically because I was showing how to put circular needles into a needle holder. That's basically all the sock talk necessary because nothing has changed about these socks. I hope my explanation of how to use a needle holder was okay. And if not, I mean, you've just seen it, seen me holding it up, swinging it around. It's very effective. Um, I would just like to point out though that I'm using these, if you remember from um, my last epi my last full episode where I was showing off potential prizes for the sock along I had these little fabric cylinder things that I did not know what they were for until after I like was editing 
and they are yarn cozies, so I have my cakes of the sock yarn in here. I ended up, actually, if you remember from previous episodes, I had one skein of this yarn and was pulling from the middle and the outside to make my two at a time socks. But that started because the it's it's yarn from Premier and because however they prepared their ball was a mess. It was tangling a lot. It it was getting pretty bad. To begin with it everything was working fine, but then just there was a lot of yarn barf and chunks of yarn just coming out and knots and things because they just didn't wind it properly. So I ended up cutting the yarn off of my like cutting the active working yarn like just snipping it and having my socks just kind of hang out for a second while I wound the yarn into two separate cakes to work from so that I wouldn't have to deal with that whole mess that it was becoming so two separate things I'm working from now but still doing it two at a time and these yarn cozies are super nice to keep things from like spilling all over the place and keep your cakes I don't know nice and firm <laughs> that was a really weird way to put it but I I think you know what I mean. And just as a reminder, the yarn is Premier Nordica in the color Rose Linen, and it is this self-patterning um, deal here. You can see kind of what the pattern does. And because I started um, from opposite ends of one ball, the uh, pattern does not match up on both socks, so they're not identical twins but still the same pattern going on just in different places okay next up after these socks what else is in this bag um okay moving on to the next bag but first i will show you that this is in there's some other stuff in here but it's mostly junk and other crafting things that aren't related to this podcast um but it's in this beautiful bag from my mom but I think she got this at Michael's if you want one but it says maker of pretty things yeah and it's just like a it's a tote bag but it's nice and it holds a lot of stuff so I have like uh some I have some materials in the bottom of here that are for making stitch markers and a bunch of other random stuff so I'm not really gonna pull all that out because they're just loose bits and bobs if you're ever interested in seeing my stitch markers, I guess let me know. I haven't made a ton, but I made some. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen a couple that I made because I showed them um, when I announced the giveaway winner on Instagram. And I said that I might give away a pack of the stitch markers that I made because I've made a couple different packs, but I just haven't ended up like listing them for sale. So I just have them. <laughs> And I figure someone should use them other than me, so I think I'm going to give them away to Val. And, um, yeah, I don't know, just as a little bonus thing. I was um, looking for, I wanted to get like a project bag or something to also send her as part of the prize for the sock along, but I couldn't find, at the Frederick Fiber Fest, there was a vendor that had inexpensive bags that were really nice quality but I didn't get one which I kind of regret I should have bought one from them I was just waiting because I knew I was going to go to another fiber fest the next weekend so it's like I can't just buy everything here but then the second weekend it ended up being a lot smaller and the person I usually buy bags from wasn't there so it just didn't work out but I guess next year I'll get a new project bag <laughs> um and then um, let's see if I end up making the sock along an annual thing, which I've thought about just because it's around the time of my podcast anniversary, so maybe it'll just be an annual kind of thing for us to do if people are interested in that. Because I've I've heard some people express interest, even though not a lot of people participated this time. I think it just came out of the blue, so no one was really ready. <laughs> um, but I might make it an annual thing, so maybe I'll buy bags for next year as part of the giveaway. Who knows? We'll see. That's all tentative and irrelevant to my works in progress. So my last work in progress is kind of the reason why, sorry if you heard shuffling, I was taking the pattern out of my bag, um, but it's kind of the reason why I haven't been working on the socks at all. Like 
this hat took me a day and a half, maybe. Like, it, I started one day, I finished the next day. If I had knitted for, without stopping, I could have finished it in one sitting, probably. But I think I started it on a Sunday, like the Sunday after the Fiberfest, and then, I mean, I had to work on Monday, so I just finished it when I came home. But um, that, combined with this next thing I'm gonna show you, are probably why I haven't worked on the socks at all after like my needle my new needles came from knit picks and I worked a little bit on the foot but then I stopped because I was trying to finish this and oh let's see this big old thing is the cumulus blouse from petite knit I cast it on and I think the pattern calls for let me see i have it here <laughs> let's see bum, bum, bum. okay if you don't know what it looks like here's a really awful black and white printout that's been folded a bunch of times but i can show you this is kind of can you see this is I don't know. You can't really see. I'll put a picture, I guess, <laughs> um, so you can see what I'm talking about. But normally it calls for, let's see, two, it looks like lace yarns held together. So it would, that would be about a DK weight sweater. But because I, I don't know why I always do this I will the sweater calls for like lace weights work together but it's also like a lace like a normal lace lace a normal lace plus a mohair or two mohairs together and I've never worked with mohair plus it's expensive so I didn't do that and then I didn't just have enough DK lying around so I was like oh I'll cast on a worsted weight version so um what I've got here is a cumulus blouse in just I finished the well it's rolled up now but I finished the body um a couple days ago and just finished the last bit of the i-cord bind off edge yesterday I finished the last half of it so this is the body of it it's a v-neck pullover um so now uh all I have to do is other than like I have to do both sleeves but then there's you pick up stitches I think along the neckline to do I think an i-cord edge around the neckline too so it's not so like rolly and gapy I guess you can also like if you think the neckline is too big you can knit a little bit to make it smaller and then do the bind off so it's gonna be more of like a sweatshirty kind of pullover I think for me because the last things I knit from pet petite knit were both no frills sweaters but those I did in a size extra small and this is a small so I think this is good I think this is too big honestly um I wanted to try it because from the recommended sizing for like bus size and all that I'm at like the border between two sizes um but I really I think I should have sized down again like I did the, for the other ones especially because I'm using a worsted weight I'm using the Karen one pound baby. I don't even know where I got this. This was leftover. I think someone from Polyface, um, like a friend from there had um, leftover yarn. Like she had given me a box of leftover yarn and I think this was in it. So I decided to just use it because it's definitely enough yardage. Um, where's the, it's uh, 454 grams, which is 16 ounces. Um, and that's 826 yards, which is a lot. <laughs> so definitely enough to make a sweater. And really, I wanted to use it for this to test if I like the pattern or not before I make it with like yarn that I actually paid for. Um, it doesn't, let me, I can put it on. It's not terrible, but it's definitely large. And I don't think I'll wash it in like the machine ever because it's going to grow a lot if I do that. Um, because acrylic tends to like, ex I don't know, it, it will loosen up a bit, not a bit, like a bunch and end up being a really a lot more oversized. But like right now, it's okay. It's an all right 
here you can see like the length is fine um it's just like a oversized pullover which is okay i am curious to see how the sleeves fit me um but i think i, I think i like it like this um because this would be like a, a what would you call it a sweatshirt that doesn't have a hood like an oversized sweatshirt kind of that even i could fit over this long sleeve and i i like it like this um so I don't know what I will do. I bought some other yarn to make another one with yarn that is actually like closer to what's called for to make this pattern. And I don't, because of how large this is, I'm not sure if I want to make that one in a small like this one or an extra small. I'm thinking this small came out so big because it's a chunkier yarn than I was supposed to use. So I don't know. I think I might still make a small and see if I like it. And if I don't, I'll just have to rip it back and recast on. Um, but this, I'm going to keep going with this. Um, I just have to do the sleeves and finish the neck and then I'll be done. And um, if you were curious, my stitch marker that's on here is a little chicken. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that really well, but yeah, I've got a little chicken stitch marker. And just a, another plain one somewhere down the back from when I was measuring the length to see how much longer I had to knit. But that's mainly what I've been working on. Um, this has been my, I used to work on my socks in the car before work and stuff. Um, but once that needle broke and I cast on this sweater, this started being my like morning knitting in the car every day. So now I just have to pick up some stitches for the sleeves and work on both sleeves. I think for this, um, because I only have the one skein and I don't feel like dealing with a mess, I think I'm going to do the sleeves one at a time, which I have never done for a um, sweater before. So we'll see how that goes. It just means I won't finish the sweater for a while because I'm sure after doing one whole sleeve, I'm going to be like, oh, and not want to finish the other sleeve, but we will see how that goes. So I talked about finished object, works in progress. I think those were my only works in progress. And then um, here's another thing that's kind of a work in progress. It is a different type of work in progress, but it's still one. And um, I don't know if you can see here, I have my previous skeins that I spun, well, my tiny hand spun skeins, and I labeled them with this shiny washi tape but this is the first one I did. This is the second one that I did. And I just have them sitting here on my shelf. And next to it was this bobbin. So I just finished this yesterday. This is two ounces. And it's the um, natural gray Cordale from Paradise Fibers. So I that, this is half of what was in that bag, basically. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I... I'm, I'm satisfied with how this turned out. I still have the other half of the bag to work on, so that'll be the other two ounces. Um, it actually, what they sent me was a little bit more than four ounces. It was like 4.09, so this is 56 grams, and then there's 60 grams, I think, in the, what you call it, 60 grams still in the bag out at my spinning wheel. So it's a little bit, like, the reason why I split it in half-ish is because I did one chunk on this bobbin and then the rest I'm going to do on another bobbin and then I'm going to apply the two together. So um, I will have a little bit, because they're not identical, because I didn't split it exactly in half, um, there's going to be a little bit left over. Uh, from when I'm plying, there's going to be a little bit left over of one single, but I think I'm going to just ply that back onto itself so that I can use up everything, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, at the um, Alpaca and Fleece Festival yesterday, I talked to some lovely women from Bower Family Farm, uh, and or at least they were manning the stand there. I don't know which one of them owns it or if both of them do, but they were giving me some advice on spinning and stuff because I was asking them um, just for some tips and um, 
I don't know. One thing that was recommended was like parking, doing the park and draft kind of method, which I sort of do. Um, mostly I just pre-draft a lot when I work because my stuff isn't too inconsistent. Like it's not, you know how some art yarn is like super thin, huge lump, super thin. Like I've none of my hand spun that, none of my hand spun that I've done has been like that which I'm thankful for because like, I don't want it to be like that. Um, so really the advice, I don't know, because I'm in a, a beginner, I feel like their advice was geared more toward like how to avoid that, which isn't something that I needed help with, but I asked for some tips on how to spin thinner and stuff like that. So um, she was saying that like parking and drafting can help, especially when you're new, but then also um, changing the fiber type can help. So. I had told them that I was working mostly with Coredale because that's what I've used for those over there. And then also this, um, I did after coming back home from the festival. Um, but like, I don't know, I feel like spinners are always like, oh, for beginners, Coredale's a great start, especially for like drop spindle and stuff. But the lovely ladies from that vending stand told me that the type of fiber you use also affects how your spin turns out and something like Coredale tends to fluff up like it puffs back up after it's spun so it'll be harder for me to make that a lot thinner because even if I spin it and it looks thin it's gonna puff back up um just naturally so she recommended another type or different blends to start with to try to get finer spun like final products I guess um so I ended up I did buy something from their stand and I'll show you that um but I just I loved going somewhere and being surrounded by fiber artists and stuff and there were like a handful of people at their different stands like I kept seeing spinning wheels and people using them there were people weaving and it was beautiful and it was just nice to be in that space and then also to be able to chat a bit and get a little bit of advice and then just talk to people about all sorts of things. I had a woman stop me, a couple people talked to me about, I was wearing my no frills sweater, the pink one made out of the Haverland Conversation Hearts yarn. And um, one woman even came by and she started like petting my arm. She's like, I'm sorry, where did you get that yarn? And was talking to me about it and saying like she loved my sweater. And I was just like, oh, thank you so much. Oh my God. Um, and that was yesterday, but last week, the weekend before, last weekend, um, I was knitting my socks as I was walking around with Rima. And I had several people stop me to talk about what I was working on and compliment the color and all that sort of thing. And just be like oh wow look at you knitting during a like fiber show it's awesome and it's like I, this is my favorite thing so I don't know I just went on a whole tangent because I started talking about the lovely people I've met um and it's not like I'm staying in touch with them but I don't know it's just nice to I don't know talk to people who like the same stuff you do I thought that was sweet and those women who are giving me advice they're the ones um it's the same stand where my mom bought these earrings for me uh in 2019 so i have recognized the stand um because of just different things they sell and i was like oh i remember they were here that time um and just talking to them now when i have a bit more experience doing things more related to what they were working on like both of the ladies there were spinning on their wheels and one had a bl blending board doing something while she was also spinning I don't know what was going on <laughs> but um I don't know it's just cool moving on <laughs> because I'm off topic I'm gonna go I'm gonna put this down and I'm really excited to work on the next two ounces of the Cordell from Paradise Fibers I I love the color that it's turning out like that gray that natural gray is beautiful I don't know I feel like when you see it in the package obviously you like it if you get it but like once you work it, it looks different than, like, the fluff looks different than the spun yarn and, like, they still look similar, but, like, seeing what it actually looks like spun up is really cool and pretty. And I think that'll be the last Corydale I work for a while. Hmm. 
Well, I, I bought a bunch of stuff, so I'll have to see what all those blends are. But I think after I'm finished with this gray, I'm going to move on to something that's not Corydale so I can try a different fiber and see how I like it and see if it spins finer. Okay, <laughs> so much talking. Um, give me a second. I'm going to move these projects away and then go get all of my acquisitions from the past, not just the past two weekends, but then also my Knit Picks order. One sec. <laughs> I got some of the acquisitions and then there's others that are in reaching distance so I'm not gonna really move them around as of yet but um, first because this was all on top of my new Knit Picks order I have my old stuff the Wool of the Andes worsted in the color Cadet that I had used for my um, what you call it no flax wait no flax I just mixed together no frills and flax my bad my flax sweater, the modified one that I made for um, an older mentor man of mine. Um, I have since shipped that to him. They received the package, I believe, but they were out of town. So I don't know what his reaction to it is. So I, I, that reminds me, I actually have to send him a message and see if they're back home yet. So I know if he actually opened it, but I just, I have a bunch of this left over. I have at least, let's see, one, two, Okay, I have like a full skein and then some skeins that were that were broken into but like aren't fully used. So I'm going to have to weigh a bunch of stuff because I mean this one I only used a tiny bit and then there's one that's like I think it's full and then there's one that I used for swatching but it's mostly full. Like I just have to weigh my leftovers to know how much I actually used for the project because I think I bought, let's see, how many grams are they? They are 50 gram skeins and I bought 14, but I don't know how many full skeins I use because I have one, two, three, four. There's four skeins over in that box and some of them are partially used, but they're all leftovers. Like I didn't use everything, so I don't know actually how much yardage I used. So I'm going to have to weigh some stuff and figure that out. Uh, but... It was just together with the rest of the things that I've got from Knit Picks because I just kept it all in the same box because that was the easiest. And um, one thing I got, I have a Yarn Swift from them and I got a case for it, but I mean, that's not too interesting. I guess I could show it to you. Hopefully this doesn't knock over my banjo because they're in the same area. Uh. So I have this case and... I mean, it's really nice quality, the strap's nice, um, my Swift is just inside there. The top says Knit Picks, I don't know if you can read that. And then the other side says We Crochet, because it's like the same company or whatever. And let me just put that back safely. Oh dear, there's going to be an avalanche one moment. Other than the Yarn Swift case that I got, because, I don't know, it's just, I needed something to put it in so I didn't get dinged around a lot. I also bought yarn because I had gone on the website intending to just buy the sock needles I needed. So to replace the broken ones, I ordered two <laughs> metal versions of the same size and length, whatever I used for my socks. I don't remember what size I use for my socks. I always use the same though. Um, you can, if you are that curious, you can look on my Ravelry sock project pages because I always use the same um, size needles with like I think a 47 inch cord just because I magic loop them two at a time and I figured having a giant cord would be fine and um, I couldn't just buy sock needles I had to get yarn of course so I'll hold up a caked one and then also a skein just because the skein still has the tag so then I can read it but I got this um, this is so gorgeous. Wow. So, um, last Saturday night, my two of my nieces came over and we had a caking party because they really like winding yarn into cakes. I don't know why it's so fun for them, but both of them had um, turns doing it. These are the ones that they're six and ten years old, I think. Um, bad at math off the fly and these kids keep having birthdays. My brothers have multiple kids, so it's like, okay, I do know how old they are if I, like, think about it, but, like, wait, wait, wait. 
today's 20 it's 2021 okay uh, so it's the six-year-old and the 11 year old they really like doing this so um I think this one I might have wound because the one that the six-year-old did is like a lot tighter <laughs> but it's fine it's fine um she normally does a good job and she really likes helping out so I got these and it's the color blackberry which that is an apt description for this it's so beautiful it's like I don't know it's getting kind of blown out by my lighting a little bit but it's just like this rich purple color um yeah I don't know and it's the gloss yarn from Knit Picks. it's a lace weight and the skeins are 50 grams, 440 yards. But this is the yarn that I actually bought for my next cumulus blouse. Um, so I'll hold two strands of this together and make the cumulus blouse out of like the weight of yarn that it was actually intended for that pattern. And we will see how that turns out. I'm really excited for this. It's going to be a lovely sweater type thing, I think. So this is going to be that same like the white sweater I just showed you the body of it's gonna be a v-neck pullover kind of thing um and I think it's gonna be pretty lovely we'll see and hopefully I like the small size if not then I will do an extra small but I really think like looking at the, I mean it's a lace weight looking at how thin this is holding it double and making myself a small I think it'll turn out fine it should be it should be fine yes so I got one, two, three, I got four skeins of this and um, they're just in this bag that I had lying around. What is this bag even from? I don't know. I've been getting a lot of mail lately for some reason. So I just have a bag that I stuck those skeins in. And then um, I also bought, okay, let's see. I might need to look it up for a second because I bought this yarn. Um, Galileo is the type of yarn um, uh, from Knit Picks and it's a sport weight. Um, here you go, you can see that's what I'm talking about. It's a sport weight and this color is called Titan and it's this really lovely like orange, which I don't really have a lot of orange clothes. I don't wear orange very much, but it's my favorite color. So um, I think it's showing up a little bit more red on screen than it is. Um, I don't know. It's about right. It's a, yeah, I don't know. It's not quite Auburn, Auburn, but I don't know. It's kind of a warm fall orange, but not a bright orange that's like in your face. It's almost like a burnt orange, I'd say. And I got how many skeins of this? One, two, three, four, five. I got six skeins of this. It's 50 grams and 131 yards. And let me look up really quick what I bought this for because I, I got this to make a specific pattern. Okay, I'm back. So I, I used my phone to look it up. So if that camera angle changed, that's why because I kind of moved things when I was clicking. But um, I got this specifically to make the Margay by Jennifer Wood. I will put a picture if you don't remember because I've talked about it before. But it is this really really beautiful sweater that has like lace detail down the arm um like both arms but it's super gorgeous I think I don't remember if the lace is only on the arms I'll have to look at the picture again but the photo on Ravelry like the main picture is this kind of warm yellow like not exactly mustard but that kind of warm golden color um but I thought it would look really nice in this kind of I don't know I was gonna say Thanksgiving orange, but that's silly. Um, but you know, like November y orange. Like it this color, I feel like it's showing up brighter on screen. Um, it's not super like it's not a neon, it's really warm. And it reminds me of the leaves outside right now. So I, I bought a bunch of skeins to make that sweater specifically. And then the last thing I got in that nitpicks order was um a fingering weight. Um so the Blackberry Gloss yarn and this Galileo yarn that's in the color Titan, these are not superwash, but this one is a superwash fingering weight. The yarn is Capretta fingering weight, and it's the color Tansy Heather, which is like this nice golden, like 
yellowy browny has a kind of hints of orange sort of um but it's a nice golden color i don't know what tansy means i don't know what that is but whatever that is that's the color that this is and it's super gorgeous i got two skeins of this it's uh 50 grams 230 yards of oh it's 80 percent superwash fine merino wool and 10 percent cashmere and 10 percent nylon so it's very soft and luxurious feeling because especially because that cashmere i've never had a yarn that has cashmere in it so i wanted to try it i think it was also on sale i only added all these things to my cart because they were also on sale because knit picks was having a sale around the time that i needed to get new needles so i decided to try this and i think i'm going to make the coastal tank with it because i only got two skeins and i don't know who who doesn't want a cashmere tank top i know that's so stupid but like what else am i going to do with 100 grams of fingering and other than socks and i don't want to make these into socks even though they'd be nice socks but like i don't want this on my feet maybe i'll make a tiny shawlet that sounded weird when i said it like a little shawl um if i don't make the tank top but i bought it specifically to make the tank top because I knew like the yardage would be fine to make one. And I think, I don't know, it'd be nice as a tank top. I think that's a good color. Yeah, so let's see. Because I read the kind of fiber content of this one, I want to go back and tell you the fiber content of these. Uh, because for some reason my brain just assumed like, oh, it's just wool, because usually that's all I buy, that or acrylic, but this is... The Galileo is 50% merino wool and 50% viscose from bamboo. So this is half wool, half bamboo. Um, and then the, the gloss is, oh wow, the, the lace weight one. It is 70% merino wool, but 30% silk. So this is also the first time I will work with silk because I've never had a silk blend yarn ever either so three new types of things for me because I haven't worked with um viscose or like bamboo based yarn either so okay let me put this back excuse my plastic shuffling noises but I know some people live in kind of some people live in climates where they need to keep their and not just climate, but locations where they need to keep their yarn kind of covered in plastic or some kind of packaging or keep like cedar blocks and things to protect it from moth damage and stuff. I don't really have, I don't live in a place where we have to deal with like moth problems and stuff, so I don't need to keep my yarn in plastic, but um, I just have some around from packaging from orders I've gotten and random stuff like that, so I'm just keeping it that way to keep them nice secure clean and keep them from snagging on other stuff and it, it just worked out for me so that's why you hear all these like noises <laughs> now is my time to remind you to take a water or tea break because i'm starting to get a sore throat from talking so much uh this tea is really cold yeah it's kind of disgusting but <laughs> my throat hurts from talking so much so maybe i will warm this if you're curious my mug says handbook for the recently deceased and it's a reference to Beetlejuice if you know that movie it's the book from Beetlejuice so like it even has like the spine of the book or whatever oh it says Beetlejuice right there but that's yeah that's why I have a creepy mug because <laughs> I really like that movie ever since I was a kid I used to be really scared of like people saying his name three times and my family would tease me about it as a kid but I mean what kid isn't scared of something like that that movie's creepy i still i really loved it because i love that kind of stuff because it's not actually scary it's just like creepy spooky but like i don't know kids can still watch it like that's that's my kind of spooky stuff also this tea it's from yogi you know if you know that brand and they always have nice little sayings on the tag thing of the bag so this one says this is my tea advice for the day live righteously and love everyone so however that makes you feel you should you should do that that's good advice <laughs> so it was super cold in here but now that i have like um there's a lamp here i only have lamps in my bedroom because i don't have like an overhead light but then i also have a special kind of lamp that i usually turn on when i record and i was really cold before starting to film but i'm getting so hot so actually i had this on my lap but i have to take it off 
but I will show it to you because I've never shown it on the podcast before. I won't be able to fit the whole thing in screen, but I made this blanket <laughs> when I was in high school. It's just a lap blanket. I kind of showed you the side, I guess. Wait, which side is right side up? This would have been the top or the bottom, whatever. I would have knit it vertically this way, if that makes sense. So that's the direction the stripes were going when I actually knit it. But it's only a lap blanket. You can, like, if you curl up, it'll fit your whole body underneath. But if you, like, extend your legs, then your feet will be sticking out. At least if you're as tall as I am. I'm, like, 5'6 or something like that. 5'5", um, 5'6". Five, 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 so... It's not long enough to stretch out underneath, but it's long enough to keep your legs warm if you're sitting down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really like it. It's cozy. It's just some random yarn from Michaels. I don't remember what it was. I did not color change or anything. This is just how the yarn was and like the texture that the yarn was. So I don't remember and I don't know if they sell it anymore. It was probably in like 2010 or something. So I have no idea any details about this, but I made like a Ravelry page for it sometime this year, I think actually, because I was like, whoa, I never put that on there, but I probably should. Um, so it might have a little bit more detail, but I don't think it does because it's been ages since I made this blanket. Like it's been over 10 years, I'm sure. But enough about blankets, now on to acquisitions. <sighs> well, it's getting so toasty in here. There's way too many lights on. I'm gonna need a drink of water after I'm done with all this but so I talked to you about my one of my acquisitions from the Frederick Fiberfest was yarn from Passion Knits I almost never buy yarn at these things I say that as if I've been to a million this was only my second and third time going to it like a yarn show but because there's so many lo like so many lovely options, everything looks wonderful. I just want to buy everything, but no one can afford that. So I usually I look to see if anyone's having anything on sale. And like the Oni mittens that I made, that was with yarn from Alpaca Joy of Maryland, who was at the uh, Alpaca and Fleece Festival yesterday. And the only reason I got that yarn from them before was because it was on sale. So I don't know. Don't don't be ashamed of looking out for deals because this can be a very be a very expensive hobby and it's n not shameful to look for what you can afford so uh, normally these are $22 each and I got them for $10 each um, so if I had bought them at the full price I probably would have only bought one but I got both of them and they're both 100% merino 200 yards, about 3.5 ounces. Oh, this one's 200 yards. This one says it's 220. So they had like multiple of these and then multiple of these, but I decided to get one of each just because I thought they were really pretty colors and they still go together even though they're not exactly the same. So I thought it might be nice to make something out of them. I think last weekend or sometime close to last weekend, I actually had filmed a little bit about my acquisitions and I showed you these. I had filmed because I bought some things that I put in the giveaway package for Val for winning the sock along. I just wanted to make sure I got footage of the little extra bits that I put in her package so that you could see them before I mailed them away. So you will have seen the dryer ball I got and the uh, really cute red, uh, what you call it? Uh, I keep saying that today. That is like my phrase of the day the needle holder that I got for her. I was going to get more yarn for giveaway at the festivals, but I feel like, I don't know, the Moon Glow Yarn Co. set that I got was the best option to give away and kind of, I don't know, match. Everything in the bag looks nice and matches together a lot better <laughs> than if I got random skeins and kind of made my own mi miss, miss, mix match, mishmash of stuff you know yeah it's like the colors match better than like adding one of these and something else and something else you know so but yeah if i didn't say it i'm sure these are worsted weight i mean it looks like it feels like it maybe it's not i don't know 200 yards for 3.5 ounces i feel like that's worsted 
It's got to be, right? Let's compare. This is worsted compared to a strand of this. Yeah, they're like the same. Oh, it's white and really blown out, so I don't know if you can see. But like, yeah, they look about, about the same. So I think these are two worsted skeins. So if anything, I can make hats <laughs> out of them. When I, it's funny because when I was buying just one skein of this from Passion Knits yarn, the woman was like, which I should have asked her name. I should ask names more often when I buy from vendors. But because I look pretty young, everyone kind of just assumes I'm a teenager and treats me as such when I go places like, I don't know. It happens a lot more often than you'd think, even though I am almost 30 years old. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like people would be weird if I was like, oh, what's your name? <laughs> it's fine. Whatever. Um, age complex aside, <laughs> these are the only other yarn skeins that I got from any Fiberfest lately. The only other things that I bought is so much fiber. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh. I bought so much fiber in the past two weekends. It's ridiculous. So if my buying all that yarn from Knit Picks wasn't enough, if my buying all that yarn from Knit Picks wasn't enough, I want to say it one more time. If my buying all that yarn from Knit Picks wasn't enough spending on yarn, which before that, I bought all that yarn from Moonglow Yarn Co. I just, I'm a mess. Why am I doing this to myself? So I bought a bunch of fiber, which I... The way that... I don't know. I feel like I'm the type of person, I tend not to buy a lot of stuff for myself without... I don't know. I'm a very, like... I try to make strategic decisions and budget and all that kind of stuff. So when I buy a bunch of things for myself all around the same time, it's kind of like, what are you doing? But I'm trying not to feel, I don't, I don't want to say guilty. I'm not going to shame myself about it, I guess. Like, I, I don't want to guilt myself about it because I can't just, sure, I can order fiber online, but there's not a lot of chances for me to like go somewhere and pick it out there and like look at I don't know, I feel like that's a very unique kind of thing, um, at least like where I live. There's not really anywhere I can get it easily. So like yarn is different because I can go buy whatever, you know. Indie dyed yarn is a little bit more special, but I can always get that online and stuff too. But I feel like buying fiber, I specifically would prefer going in person to pick it out and look at it. So I bought a lot more of that than... I would ever buy of yarn at a festival just because the yarn it's whatever the fiber is more special to me and like something that I want to I feel like I need to see it in person for the most part like dyed fiber specifically not just like something I could order from paradise fibers but as someone who's beginning I just I'd like to have it tangibly you know I don't know that might seem silly but I'm not going to order fiber online, really, I don't think, unless I ru somehow run out of all of this stuff. Um, but I won't buy it online in the same way that I feel comfortable buying yarn for projects and stuff, which I also, I don't order yarn online a lot either. So this was just a good time for me to get all these purchases out of the way until next year, I guess. Let's see. Which, I mean, that also, it depends on how much I end up spinning or not. And... Considering this bobbin that I showed you, this took me two and a half hours to do two ounces. So I'm not sure how often I'm going to spin and all that kind of stuff. So all that out of the way to say I got this. I'll take it out of the bag to show you too. It's not really blue. I feel like it, it's coming up a little bit blue in the in some places. Like these, this isn't like a, a bluish green. It's just like a kind of brighter, lighter green. Um, it seems like it has kind of a blue tint. Oh, maybe there you can see it better. Um, I think the light was giving it sort of a blue tint. But I got this braid, and I just thought it was really beautiful. Colors inspired by nature is right. That's so gorgeous. So I got this. 
I got all these beautiful dyed yarns and now I'm like, not yarns, dyed um, fibers. And now I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I want to chicken out and be like, oh, is it actually going to turn out well? Maybe I shouldn't use it and stuff like that because I don't know what I'm doing. But I think one incentive to practicing, sorry, I'm just hooking the tag back on. One incentive to practicing more at my spinning is using something that looks beautiful. So even if it turns out um, a heavier weight yarn than what I wanted or like that I aim for, at least it'll be nice colors and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. This one, I'm not going to take this out because this is just a huge pile of fluff. There is definitely sparkle in there. Oh yeah, like you can see it right here. But I don't want to make a mess of this, so I'm going to leave it in the bag. It's six ounces. So this is more ounces than anything else that I've showed you so far. Yeah, they're from Pennsylvania, Spring Grove, Pennsylvania. That will be interesting because I haven't worked with alpaca ever either. So, so far I've only worked with that white Cordale and then this gray Cordale here. So now I have this Merino and this alpaca slash Angelina, which is alpaca and sparkle. So mostly alpaca. This one of the sparkly bits are really cool looking. I wish the camera picked them up better, but that's okay. Okay, next I want to show you... Okay, I know this has been a super long episode, but we're almost done, I promise. Um, this one's in a plastic bag because I brought my own bag to the Alpaca and Police Festival, but this is from Bauer Family Farm, and here's the card I was talking about, so I will try to flip it. Um, can I focus on this? Hello? Did it refocus? I can't tell. So, I think it refocused. But this is um, Bauer Family Farm that I was talking about. Linda Bauer is the one, the main person that was talking to me, I believe. They're from Pennsylvania, okay. She put the fiber I bought from her in a plastic bag so that it wouldn't snag and stuff in my bag with the other stuff I had. So, or I don't think I bought anything else yet. So she just did it as a preventive measure for like not snagging on anything I would buy the rest of the day, you know? So. This is the woman that I was telling about my new spinning wheel and um, asking her how she spins finer yarn or like tips for spinning finer yarn. And one thing that she said was to change the fiber type and get something that's slipperier. So she told me to try, um, they had a couple different blends for sale, but she suggested doing the Merino Tensile blend to try spinning finer. So I got this. Um, this tag just says um, hand dyed merino slash tensile or tensile. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, it's 50 50 from Bauer Family Farm. Uh, it was $14 for 3.3 ounces. So that's a good price. And I think it's really pretty. I told you I'm super into these purples and pinks right now. And maybe it's because of that um, Haverland no frills that I've been wearing. I don't know. I'm just like obsessed with purples and pinks because it even like, look at that. I mean, like, this is like the nighttime cousin or something of this. This is a lot more pastel, but it's still, like, it's the same. Like, the lighter colors in here, I feel like, are these. And I think that's beautiful. It's very soft and nice, and it's a beautiful braid. And I will be trying this out soon. I don't know if this will be the next thing I work on. I haven't decided yet. I'm not sure. Because, I mean, now I have so many options for what to spin with next so I'm not really sure what to do next because I still also have this from the Fiberists which they were at the Al Alpaca and Fleece Festival yesterday but I didn't buy anything from them but they still had great stuff and they had like grab bags um, of like kind of a mystery combinations of skeins and stuff for sale which was really cool but I was not trying to buy a lot of yarn or anything, so I just bought random fiber, and I knew I had their fiber already at home, so I didn't buy more. But this is the one, the Merino, half Merino, half Polyamide. The one that I said, it was like 50% Superfine Merino, but then 37.5 Faux Cashmere and 12.5 Trilobal Nylon, whatever that means. 
So this is the one that's like white but has like colorful like rainbow through it. I think I might use this next because this is now the oldest fiber that I have. So after the gray from Paradise Fibers is done, I think I'm going to move on to this. Even though it's still kind of plain, but I think that like rainbow uh, polyamide will be, be a nice touch. And then after that, I'll move on to some of these more colorful things that I just bought. But I have one more thing. Sorry, I keep I keep getting sidetracked. I am so all over the place. So I showed you those one, two, those three. Uh, three. Well, one's a braid. Two's a two are braids, and one's just a bag of roving. But then here's my last thing I got. It's gradient roving. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a rainbow. I love the rainbow. It's funny because, okay, this is from Angel Lux Fiberworks. They're from Westminster, Maryland. And it's hilarious because I was walking around with my dad and I said, when we went in their booth, I was looking at some of their gradient roving um, and just general like roving. And I was like, oh, they should do a rainbow one. That would look really pretty. And then I saw this and I was like, they heard me. <laughs> the universe was like, but you want rainbows, huh? Here it is. Uh, so um, it's four ounces. This is four ounces of Corydale, uh, which I just said that I mainly work with Corydale. So actually maybe I'll do this next so that I have another Corydale thing to go on the wheel. But I think maybe taking a break and trying something else in between might be better because then like I'll have done Corydale in two colors, the white and the gray, and then practice with a different fiber and see if I can spin thinner or better um, with that fiber and then go back to Corydale and see if anything's different. I think that's what I'll do. Um, so I'll take a break with something new and then go back to Corydale as my fourth spin. And I think that will be cool. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. And because it's a gradient roving like I'm gonna have to decide how I want to spin it and ply it because I don't know if I want to do like to keep it as a rainbow maybe I'll take each color split each color in half and then ply one half in order and then ply the other half in order and ply them together still in order so it keeps each separate color or if I want to like barber pole it and have different colors plied together I don't know there's a lot of thinking that's gonna have to go into this one so maybe it won't be the fourth ply not fourth ply fourth spin I do but we will see but I'm super excited Ugh, like it feels so soft and it's so nice look at this pink it's so beautiful just it's like rainbow sherbet and I'm here for it I love it so much okay so I completely forgot I got this this is how you can tell I bought too much stuff because I didn't even remember buying this. <laughs> Let me try to focus on there. So pretty. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I think this episode's been long enough. I've talked so much that I need to go drink several glasses of water and I don't know, maybe take off this. It's not exactly a sweater material. It's a long sleeve, but it's kind of, it's a thin fleece. So I am super hot right now and I need to turn off these lights, but it was really good seeing y'all. And I don't know, I just, I will keep you updated with all my spinning and hopefully things go well. I was going to, I was thinking about working on the other two ounces of Cordale today, of the gray Cordale, but I, I'm getting CPR and first aid certified soon and I have to kind of study for my test. So I think I will just relax for the rest of the day, do some kind of meal prep for this week. I'm starting a new job. I don't know if I've kept you up to date with my job saga because it's been a whole a whole thing. Um, it's been a mess, but I'm starting full time at this place starting tomorrow, actually. So that will be interesting because what I was doing part time, it's not the same position as what I will now be doing full time. So I just got to 
do orientation again and figure out what I'm actually doing for work, you know? But it's good news and it's a good thing. Uh, it's just new, so I need to meal prep for my lunches. Um, I can't eat gluten, so I can't really just go out and buy random lunches during the week and stuff like a lot of people that I know do, so I bring food all the time. Uh, so I have to kind of think ahead of what I'm going to eat for lunch and um, study for my test and just relax some. I'm super tired. I'm exhausted and I just want to get some relaxation in before my Sunday's over. So I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my Sunday. I hope you're enjoying your, I mean, I will probably upload this on a Friday. So I hope you enjoy your weekend. Have a great one. I hope you've been well. Um, take care of yourself, especially as it's getting colder in at least the northern hemisphere here. Make sure you uh, bundle up and stuff. Don't get sick. Keep up your vitamin C intake. I don't know. Do some things outside if you can so you can still get that fresh air. I know it's harder to get sunlight because it's getting darker earlier, but I don't know. Let's just do what we can to keep getting those happy rays of sun. <laughs> As I post this, it's, like I said, it's most likely a Friday morning, so enjoy your weekend. I might be going to Polyface this weekend, so I don't think any of you would randomly go there, but if you're around Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley, hi, I'm here too, probably. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know, be well, take care of yourself, and have a good day. Thanks for listening to me ramble all the time, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.